Let's do something interesting with the bee particles again. I can't help myself, I'm addicted to them right now. And this time I thought I'd actually give you a couple pointers to get started with these bee particles if you want to test them yourself. Because there's not much information on the internet about how to use it right now because it's in development still. You can go to builder.blender.org and then you go to the experimental branches section. And here you can find the functions branch. So you just download this and unpack the zip and then you've got yourself the functions build. It's easy as that. So here's the first steps to take to get a basic particle simulation. This will change in the future, uh, but as of making this video, this is how you do it. You add a modifier to an object, in this case to the default cube. There's this B particles modifier and the cube disappears. Don't worry about it, it's supposed to happen. So you need to give this modifier a tree to read, but it doesn't have anything here, so you have to create it with this plus icon. So then if you press play, you actually get a bunch of particles already, and they are falling. But how do you control it? Well, let's pull up another window here and change it to function nodes. And here you can't see anything at the moment, you have to select the tree that we created earlier. And now you can see the nodes which are controlling the simulation. So in this example there's the initial grid emitter and then there's the basic force with the minus one value in the z direction. They both feed into this particle system node. And you can add new nodes from up here or with shift A. There's the function nodes and then there's the particle system related nodes. And there's not that much nodes here at the moment but you can also search which gives you the list of all of the possible nodes, which is much more than this in this predefined list. They are, they are not all here. So that's the very basics. But what I want to do today is to work on this new effect that I got the idea for. So I have this node set up here, and I have the Suzanne, which is remeshed so that it doesn't have any holes in it. It's a one solid piece. And I have a bunch of these particles, and I found out that if I take the closest location on the object of a specific particle and take the normal vector of that position on the mesh. And then I do just a simple cross product with another vector that is not the same as the normal vector. And I apply it as a force to the particle. And then I add a mesh force and a drag force. I get this and I also add a trail system so I can see the path that the particle creates. I, I get this very nice looking effect where the particles sort of travel around the Suzanne object and they create these really nice looking paths. So already this is a very nice looking effect but I want to work on this a little bit and also try a different model so that it's a bit more interesting. So I dug up this old tree model that I have lying around from the second uh, Songs for Humanity video. And I thought I could sort of try to emit the particles at the bottom of the tree and have them sort of climb up the trunk of the tree and leave the trails behind as they do so. And that way sort of build the tree trunk out of the particles or something like that. I'm not sure yet, but I'll start working on this and see where I end up. Okay, so now it's time for the completely out of place philosophical ramblings while you are watching this progress time lapse. Have you ever thought about how much we base our life on imagined things, imagined realities, imagined stories and beliefs? If the first thing that pops to your mind is religion, then no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about much more common shared beliefs and stories in today's societies. Things like money, companies, law, humanism as a whole, etc. It's weird when you think about it. Like there's this whole monetary system that basically runs the world at this point, but none of it is really physically real. Like yeah, a small part of the money in the world is represented by gold or some other physical things, but the key word is represented. The gold bar is not the money, it's just a physical representation of money, something we collectively decided is a good and relatively stable representation. But the real money is the value that it gives to people. The fact that you can get stuff with it. Get other people to do stuff for you. And that doesn't originate from the gold bar. It originates from the common shared belief 
that the gold bar has value. Or more commonly nowadays that the number on your phone's screen has value. In the same way the company Google, for example, has representative people, it owns buildings, data centers, cars, but the essence of the company itself is just a shared belief. And it's actually these imagined structures that give humanity the possibility of large-scale cooperation. Without any sort of common beliefs, there wouldn't be a global society. Not a chance. But how can an imagined thing that doesn't really exist physically still make physical changes in the world? Like if I imagine a visual shape that has never physically existed in the real world, I can just draw it on paper and then it exists. It seems like there has to be a physical process that enables me to experience the image of the shape before it's on the paper. And now we of course again come to the fact that there is no solid scientific understanding about how the experience of consciousness emerges from brain activity. But let's assume that it either just somehow emerges from the neurons firing in the brain, or that it's based on some currently undiscovered new particle or quantum field, or something like that. Could we then look at a shared and imagined belief as a physical entity? An entity that emerges from all the conscious thoughts of the individual people and is then able to exert a physical influence on the world. Could it somehow be a conscious entity? In much the same way, for example, the physical entity we see as a cat emerges from trillions of tiny little particles that are interacting with each other. There is no cats in the elementary physics, but still somehow there's cats all around us. It's kind of fun to imagine the shared beliefs as these large thought creatures slowly roaming around the world and changing it, completely invisible to us. Or it could be that all the world really is is just a bunch of tiny vibrations in the quantum fields and all these entities, humans, cats, experiences are just a weird illusion of some sort. But even if that's the case, this illusion for us is the most real thing we have access to. And in our human world, these shared imagined entities are really powerful. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's a good idea to sometimes take a step back and think a little bit about what kind of stories we decide to believe in. Because those stories have the power to change history, for better or for worse. Okay, I'm now in the process of rendering out the final animation. Uh, making this took a little bit longer than I was expecting. This is now the second evening I'm working on this. But I have to say I love the end result. It turned out really great and even better than I was expecting. So let's have a look. So short, let's watch a second time. I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I did. And I also hope I managed to spark some interesting thoughts with those philosophical ramblings. But anyway, I hope you have a really nice day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.